Hello. Hello, 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 hello. I have never done this before, just a pop-up stream. I've always planned them out, so I don't know if this is working, if there's people in the chat. I don't know what's happening, but people said they wanted me to go live after my dad's live, so here I am. Hello, Ian. Hello, Andrew. Hello, KA. All right, so there are people here. That's good. I don't know what it looks like. What does it look like on your end? It just says, like, disco live stream. It doesn't, just some random. Is there a thumbnail? Let's see. Oh, it just has like a rainbow as the. Only two people watching, but there's three people in the chat. Let's see. I'm changing the name. Chatting in the evening. Hey, Sam, are you now scheduling your streams one hour earlier? No, that was the same time we always do it. Six Pacific, nine Eastern. Same time we always do it. I might not have gotten, I, because I didn't put this ahead of time, I didn't put it in the chat. Nobody might show up to this one, because there's only three people watching. Bad planning by me. Yeah, I think I need to m make sure I put something out and then put it on the chat and then KA says we should gatekeep this stream. What does that mean? Hey, Alex Blanco, how's it going? Make sure no one else finds out about it. That would suck for me, because then nobody would ever watch. Andrew says, I can't wait for your new stream where the keys stand for now. It's scheduled for mid-April, right? Um, we don't have a schedule for it yet, um, a, dis a, a d definitive schedule for it yet, but sometime this spring, most likely. That's what we, I think we said. Sometime in the spring. All right, more people are joining. Six people here now. I don't like my lighting, it looks too blue. That's better. There we go, that's better. Well, what do, what do people wanna chat about? People want me to go live, now what do you wanna chat about, okay? Let me know. Does the October surprise trigger the scandal key? I don't know. I am not 
an expert on the keys to the White House. My dad is, but I'm not. So I, I don't even know what the October surprise is. What was it like growing up? What was your father like growing up? He's a goofball. He's smart. He's an, kind of like an absent-minded professor type guy. But I enjoyed growing up with him. I think that Biden has a great chance. Look, Alan is right. Recession is running out of time already. It's only two quarters left before the election. Yeah, there's no doubt. Hey, Jamie Smith, how's it going? What would you say in terms of your dad's personal opinion? Is he a liberal like Bernie or a social... Or is he a liberal like Biden or a social Democrat like Biden? I don't know if I really want to answer that because... People are just going to jump on it. Like, you know, if he if he comes out too much on where he leans on the political spectrum explicitly, people are always going to say, oh, he's biased. He's this, he's that. They can infer what they want, but I just don't feel the need to put it out explicitly. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. Does that make sense? What are your favorite sites to visit in DC? Are you going there on vacation or like to live there? Alan does not like labels. Neither do I. He said he was a Democrat. Well, if that's what he said he was, then I guess that's what he is, you know? I'll let him speak for himself too, you know? So if you're going to D.C. on vacation, what sites would you see? Um, definitely the National Mall. I mean, you know, the thing about D.C. is the touristy stuff is all right there for you. It's like all in one place. You know, the Lincoln Memorial, the World War II, or the Jefferson Congress, the White House. It's all there. So definitely all of that. Um, I'm trying to think of like answers that I can give that are not just your typical touristy stuff but like if you're going to dc for the first time you should do the typical touristy stuff it's worth it um definitely go and check out a lot of different like look up the smithsonian museums and which ones interest you the most go see them air and space national gallery of art i really like those karen strickler says alan always calls himself a kennedy democrat but he means jfk certainly not rfk Kyle Bourne says, your father is very objective. If he predicts Trump winning, then I'm honestly thinking about moving to New Zealand. I don't trust Trump with nukes. That's a far move. My mom says she likes to take the bus tour, especially at night. Yeah, the, the monuments are really good at night. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to, like, definitely the Smithsonian. Definitely the National Mall. I'm trying to think of other things that you could check out. If there's something at the Kennedy Center that's playing that you like, you should go to the Kennedy Center. The Kennedy Center is amazing. Um, Georgetown is like kind of the typical bougie neighborhood. Um, U Street and Adams Morgan are more if you're interested in like partying. There's a lot of bars and and good good places to you know check out the nightlife in Adams Morgan and U Street area. Canada is closer to move than New Zealand. I agree. But Canada is cold as shit, man. Mount Vernon or Gettysburg? That's a good question. Probably Mount Vernon because there's more to see. Gettysburg is just kind of like a field. And, I, you know, they have, like, you know, tons of tourist attractions there. You know, like museums and tour shops and stuff like that but mount vernon has more stuff there if that makes sense kyle says i want to be far away from the usa when the nukes start flying i'm not joking i'm not super worried about nukes well i mean i am generally speaking but i don't know i don't think trump i think trump is kind of soft on the inside i don't think he's going to start throwing around nukes my personal opinion Toronto is where most of Canada's population is, and that's southern enough that has 
for temperatures to many U.S. cities. That's true. I live in L.A., though, so I like the warm. So I've lived in Boston, and it's, it's too cold for me. New Zealand or Chile? You really want to get out there, man. You're really trying to get the heck out. My mom says, you can also get to Mount Vernon on the Mount Vernon Trail by bike. That's true, too. It's a really nice bike ride. Boston is so windy. I didn't really, I don't know. I, I, I didn't, I didn't notice it was exceptionally windy. Andrew says, I don't think that Gaza will turn the foreign policy failure for Biden. It's Netanyahu who's getting most of the blame. Biden is mostly responsible for Ukraine development for Israel. Not so much. Fair point. Joshua D says, I don't think you'll be safe from nukes just because you're out of the U S laugh out loud. If you're in New Zealand, you're probably pretty safe. Do you brag about your dad graduating from Harvard? Did I go to an Ivy League too? No, I don't. What would I like? How would I brag? That'd be weird. Like, how would I brag about my dad going to Harvard? Like, hi, I'm Sam. By the way, my dad went to Harvard. Like, no. And did I go to an Ivy League school? I did not. I went to American University where my father teaches, to be precise. And then I went to grad school at Emerson College, which is a small school in Boston, downtown Boston. Probably all, all, all you political heads know it because it does a lot of polling. Boston was ranked fourth windiest city in 2022. All right, well, there you go. Is that in the U.S. or in the world? I want to go to New Zealand just so I could pretend to be a hobbit. Me too. Um, Hobbiton is a, seems like a nice place. The Shire seems beautiful. Boston is the fourth windiest city in the U.S. Okay, well, I guess it's windy. I mean, it's right on the bay, Massachusetts Bay, so I guess that's where the wind comes from. I don't know. Do I know anyone who lived to be over 100 years old personally? I don't think so. Not that I can think of. Man, I really missed out on a lot of viewers tonight. We had like 350 people in the chat and I didn't put my, I didn't have a link to put. So I missed, I, I, I probably missed out on at least 10 extra people that could have joined. Dummy. Kyle Bourne says, yeah, my dad is smarter than yours. And he says, not my dad. I mean, you telling other kids that your dad is smarter than theirs. Yeah, what am I supposed to say? I, you know, I wouldn't say that. Yes, Jamie, I did live in Boston. Lizzie Borden House? What is that? Let me look it up. One second. I have a... When I'm not with my dad, I can do more fancy stuff. Let's see here. What is the Lizzie Borden house? All right, let's see. One second. Oh, there we go. Lizzie Borden House. Oh, yes, I did go there. I think. Oh, wait. No. This looks like a house in Salem that I went to. The witch house in Salem. But I don't think I ever went here. No, definitely not. I, I've never been to this area of Massachusetts. So what is it? Lizzie Borden. The Lizzie Borden house is notorious for being the home of Lizzie Borden and her family. It's located in the location of the 1892 unsolved double murder of Lizzie's father and stepmother. I'm not really into scary. Uh, I'm into spooky stuff. I'm not into like scary stuff. 
So that's probably why I never saw it. I never, I never took that journey. Joshua D says on this cartoon called back and the back at the barnyard, they had a funny wind joke. The two biggest settings of a fan were Chicago and not in Kansas. That is pretty funny. Does my dad play chess? Is he any good? Yes, he plays chess. Yes, he's good. Of course. I've never beaten him. I don't think I've even come close to beating him, to be honest. Andrew says, I researched the keys under a microscope, Sam, and I can tell you that Biden only needs to avoid social unrest, scandal, and recession in order to score eight keys, which is enough for a victory. Well, I'm glad you're a, you're a fan of the keys. You talk so corporate? What do, what do you mean by that? How do I talk corporate? Has your dad expressed ever expressed any views on the JFK assassination? Do you have any thoughts? Not that I can remember specifically. Do I have any thoughts? I think JFK was assassinated. That's my only thought about it. It's never been something that's been very interesting to me and you know like conspiracy theorists kind of ruined it for everybody conspiracy theories are, are such buzz kills dude if you think about it like they're just like they're so fucking annoying maybe andrew will be knighted by sam as the official heir to the keys to the white house maybe What is his chess F FIDE score? FIDE, F I D E score. I'm not sure. And what's yours? I have no idea what his is, and I don't. I don't have one. I I stink at chess. I've never really put any time or energy into learning, like how to be good at chess. I mean, I know how to play chess, obviously, but I have no idea what my FIDE score is. Is that how you say it? FIDE. I saw your dad a little bit frustrated for the first time. Merrick really got him slightly uncomfortable. Yeah, he's got strong opinions on Merrick Garland, no doubt. There wouldn't be a five score if they play on a board. True. F FIDE? That's how you pronounce it? F FIDE, score? FIDE score? My mom says I'm good at chess. I really don't think I am good at chess. Joshua says, I'd love to be the heir, but I'm not good enough at predicting, uh, I'm not good enough at understanding the economy to predict those keys. I don't think you have to be super, I mean, my dad's not an economist, but he still does it. I don't think you have to be like super, you don't have to be an economist, you don't have to be super well-versed in economics. It's just reading numbers, basically, from what, from what I understand. Linda found me. Do I think Trump has dementia? No, I don't. How do you get a fee day score? You play on like chess.com or something? I, I'm not. If I went on chess.com, I would be, get destroyed, I feel like. I just feel like it takes so much time and energy to be good at chess. And like, I don't like playing. Like, I'm, I don't find that much fun or joy or excitement in playing chess so it's like i don't really want to put that time and energy into studying how to be good at chess you raise your feed day score by playing in tournaments well i'm certainly not going to do that i guess never say never maybe at some point in my life i'll catch the chess bug i like the idea of being good at chess because like there's such this prestige and like everybody who's good at chess is so smart but it's worth it once you get good. Right, but it takes so much time and effort to get good, right? No? I feel like there's so much strategy you have to absorb and learn and memorize for chess. 
that it's to get good you have to put in so much time and effort and i just don't know if that's what i want to do with my time and my effort you feel me Have I seen any good shows lately? You know what show I stumbled upon, which I wasn't even planning to watch, but it was pretty good, is the new Donald Glover show, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. It's pretty good. Chess can be a very interesting game or a boring one. I agree with that analysis. I agree. Sam, what do you think about this? Trump was down by a lot of keys only four years ago, including scandal and social unrest. But those cleats clearly do not flip every four years. Was is that is that a question? It seems more like a statement. Cobborn says, I stink at chess, but I'm great at wordle. Well, maybe you need to get your wordle wordle score going, right? John Mitchell went to jail for helping to plan the Watergate break-in and his role in the cover-up. So I'd have to say that Garland is the second worst AG. That's a fair point. Yeah, I don't know. I think him calling Merrick the worst AG ever, I don't agree with that personally. Let's just say that. I think it's a little extreme. My mom says she found two TV series that she likes. The Bears and... The old man. Okay, there you go. Jamie Smith says, I have this theory that if Hillary picked Bernie as her VP, it would have changed the outcome of the election. It's a little complicated to explain, though. I guess if it affects the keys, I would buy it. If it doesn't, I probably wouldn't. Is Rock Creek Park a good place to go? Yeah, it's fine. Now, being out in here in LA, I'm spoiled. It's like Rock Creek Park seems like a you know a neighborhood park compared to like the mountains and stuff you can hike out here. But yeah, it, it's nice. You know, it's a nice place to feel like you're in nature for a little bit to go hiking to take a walk. Joshua D says, "I'd feel like I'd be okay at wizard chess after watching the life-size chess scene in the movie, and I am great at checkers, like Harry Potter, like the scene from Harry Potter." Is that you mean by wizard chest? You're a wizard, Harry. You're a wizard, Harry. I don't know why I have these headphones on. I don't really need them anymore. My ears are getting hot. My dog just made a funny sound. Andrew says, I meant the time gap for them to flip is historically big. Last scandal before Trump was in the 90s. Last social unrest is 1968. Therefore, it's very unlikely that they turn against Biden that fast. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. But plenty of unprecedented, pre plenty of unprecedented things happen when people said they weren't going to happen. So you can't just rely on the past. You have to wait to see. Did I watch the Oscars? Yes, I did. And I got 17 out of 23 correct. I did a prediction. Maybe that's what I should do, start predicting the Oscars. I don't think anybody would really care that much about that, though. Joshua D says, I wish I had a dog. When I get one, I hope he's as cute as yours. I hope he's as cute as mine, too. Mine is super cute. Joshua, you also got 17 out of 23. There we go. The one that really irked me was uh, Emma Stone winning over Lily Gladstone. I'm not saying Emma Stone's performance wasn't great, but Lily Gladstone's was phenomenal. It was like performance of her lifetime. And, you know, Emma Stone's was good, but it should have been Lily Gladstone's in my opinion. Linda said, we just watched Poor Things. Wow, that was a wild ride. Poor Things is wild as... Poor Things is really wild. Jamie Smith says, Sam, I commend you for what you said about TikTok tonight. I totally agree. Well, thank you, Jamie. I appreciate that. Bunnies are better than dogs. As pets, you're saying? 
Or do you just like ban- bunnies? Do you think they're cuter? You want me to show Kiko? All right, hold on. Come here, bro. Come here. Yes, good boy. He's stretching. You want to come up here? Come on. Thank you. You're cute. Bro, you usually pick him up. Here he is. Say hi, bubs. You good boy? Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Say hello. <laughs> there he is. American fiction was really good. I also liked American fiction a lot. You know, it's not, I don't think it's best picture worthy, but it's a, like, it's just a good, solid movie. Joshua D says, my birthday party was actually Oscar themed. We dressed to impress, played games and finished with watching the Oscars. My friends even got me an Oscar statue for my birthday. That's not, that's cool. Jamie Smith, you have the same dog. Joshua D says his cousins have the same dog. How old is he? He's um, three. Andrew says, without your father, I would have lost my mind under pressure of those polls. In reality, they are completely useless. President Dukakis may confirm. Polls are pretty useless. Yeah, that is true. People don't like, my mom says she couldn't watch Poor Things. Joshua D says, I feel you when it comes to Poor Things. I could not watch that movie again. Yeah, it's gross and weird, but it's still a good movie. It has a good message. I really like the ending and thematically what it explored and all that jazz. Polls are 100% useless at the presidential level, but may hold more relevance at the state, Senate, governor races. They're still wrong sometimes, though. Yeah, that's a fair point. Because the snapshot is less big, you know, the more smaller of a snapshot you have to take, probably the more accurate it is, right? That's just basic statistics. It's like if you're taking a snapshot of 100 million people or 10,000, the snapshot of 10,000 is probably more detailed and accurate. Joshua D says, I recognize how wonderfully made poor things is. It's just too uncomfortable. Yeah, it definitely makes you uncomfortable, there's no doubt. But that's sort of on purpose. It's kind of supposed to make you feel a little uncomfortable. Yeah, and, you know, obviously you have to rely on polls for more state and local election because there's no 13 keys model. Maybe you need to make one, Jamie Smith. Did you ever think about that? Maybe it's up to you to make the state, the state and local one. Who knows? Good news, Atlanta Fed estimates the GDP growth in Q1 at 2.3%. Good news again. Good news. Very good news. My hair is wild today. And the hat didn't help. Trump is going to have a hissy fit if he loses Mar-a-Lago. I agree. Jamie Smith, he says he's going to try to do the state and local one. That would be cool. Why, did Al, why didn't Al Pacino just say, and the Oscar goes to? That's a good question. It's funny, at the Oscar party I was at, someone was like, why do they keep having, like, like they want to do this legacy thing for Best Picture where they have, like, people who have been in Hollywood for a long time. I'm trying to be political correct. Old motherfuckers. They got old motherfuckers in it, right? And you had, like, the big moonlight fiasco where... He said La La Land, but it was actually Moonlight. And then this year, it looked like Al Pacino was like making fun of that or just off his rocker. There, someone at my, at my Oscar party was saying they should have younger people present that award 
just so they, they they make sure they get it right and it's the climax right and al pacino's was very anticlimactic his delivery was very anticlimactic trump spread trump spreads lies about everything it's horrible and he can fix it maga believe him that is true i met al pacino he's awesome i'm sure he is awesome How'd you meet Al Pacino? That's that's pretty cool. The Godfather. I thought when they were talk when they were announcing him, I thought they were about to bring out Francis Ford Coppola because they were talking about the Godfather and all that. And I was like, oh shit, Francis Ford Coppola is about to come out. But it was Al Pacino. But it's like both are cool. The big thing about Trump right now is the threat he represents to our national security. He is a man who poses a as a billionaire, but may be broke at the same time, he's in desperate need of money. All true. I'm not really scared for our national security. I think mostly he's screwing up our domestic security. He's turning so many Americans against other Americans. I think that's a bigger threat. Are you excited for Coppola's movie Megalopolis? Yeah, that's why I, that's why I thought it was gonna. That's why a lot of people at the party I was at too thought it was gonna be him because you know he's trying to promote he's Hollywood legacy, but he's also trying to promote this new movie. So everybody thought it was gonna be Coppola. But yes, I'm excited. Hello, Anthony Michael guitarist. How are you? It's going well. Thanks for joining us. Soon, Trump begins to receive national security briefings again as the Republican nominee. He may need to sell that information. Yeah, that's concerning for sure. Kyle Bourne says, I met Al Pacino on the streets of Manhattan when I was in college. He was outside waiting for his car service to pick him up. I told him he is one of the greatest actors of all time, and he thanked me. That's a very, that's a very nice uh, greeting. It's funny because I keep seeing um, William H. Macy here in LA he's on one of the hiking paths I take my dog on and um yeah I just I think it's weird to go up to celebrities and be like oh my god but like just being like yo your work is awesome and just move on I think that's the way to do it Anthony Michael Guitar says I enjoyed the show tonight yeah I thought it was a good show I thought it was a good show Joshua D says, I don't know what Coppola's movie is going to be about, but hopefully it's a return to form. I think everybody's hoping it's a return to form. I mean, when's the last time he made a movie? Let's look that up. Francis Ford Coppola. How do you spell? Let's see. What's the last thing he directed? 2016 Distant Vision. I don't even know what this movie is. What is this? It doesn't even have a poster. A coming of age story about a teenage Italian American boy and a girl. It doesn't even have a movie poster on IMDb. Twixt? What is this? This looks bad. A struggler, a struggling horror writer visiting a small town on a book tour gets caught up in a murder mystery. It's got a 4.7. That's pretty bad. Although IMDB ratings don't really mean much. Get the heck out of here, you ad. Yeah, these. I, I didn't even know he made all these movies in the 2000s. None of them are very highly rated, and I've not heard of many of them. What's the last good movie he made? Godfather Part 3? That's the last good movie he made. I like New York stories. This is a good uh, amalgamate of short films. 
Man, he made a lot of not so great movies. But also a lot of great movies like Apocalypse Now. Like The Godfather. The conversation I've never been a fan of. Hmm. Interesting. Josh Fadi says, celebrities are people too. If I were to meet one, I'd be as respectful as possible. I called them Mr. or Mrs. Potentially ask them to take a picture, then move on with my day. Fair. Joshua D says, I love The Outsiders. The extended edition is better. I've never seen it or read it. It's on Netflix, The Outsiders, right? Meeting celebrities doesn't have to be a big deal, but it kind of is. It's not. They're just people like all of us. They just happen to be known by other people. That's the only thing that makes distinct them. Makes them distinct. I mean, many of them are great artists. There's no doubt. You know, great actors, great singers, great directors, great painters, great, you know, whatever it might be. Coppola released the extended edition of The Outsiders because his granddaughter was going to watch it in her class or something like that. That sounds like a very Coppola move to me. It's interesting. Coppola's first good movie was The Godfather. Like, none of this other stuff I've ever heard of. His first highly rated movie, especially on IMDb, is also The Godfather. I mean, he had quite a run here with Godfather Part 2 and Apocalypse Now. That's pretty crazy. Sam, this is a serious question. Dude 2 is released. How to watch this movie in a high quality at home outside of a big screen? You're not going to get the same quality as you would in a theater. It's impossible. If you were to watch it at home, I would watch it on a big new TV with surround sound speakers. If You, you know, it, the more equipment, the more you spend, the better the movie quality is. But you're not going to be able to recreate what you see in the theaters at home. I don't know how some of you can stand to watch Dune. That movie is like three hours long, Jamie Smith says. I don't, the length of a movie doesn't usually bother me. I, I like movies that are super long, but um, I just can't get into Dune. I saw the first one and I was just kind of like, eh, okay. I just couldn't really get into it. It was fine. It wasn't a, you know, it's a well done movie, but I just couldn't get into it. Joshua D says to watch Dune at home. Go to your rich uncle's house to watch it on an 80 inch TV with surround sound. Exactly. Kyle Bourne says, I love the Harry Potter movies. I also love the Harry Potter movies. I'm a big Potter movie guy. Big Potter head. You're a wizard, Harry. Ian says, I haven't seen Dune. I was put off by the 80s version. Yeah, apparently the 80s version is really bad. So at least these new ones are an improvement on that but the first one is better dune was good the first one is better dune was good so dune one was better than dune two i've heard like a thousand different things i've heard some people say the first one is better the second one is better they both suck they're both like the best movies ever made it's such a dune is a strange strange thing to me 
favorite Harry Potter movie, least favorite. I would say my favorites are either favorites are either Prisoner of Azkaban three or five probably Prisoner of Azkaban or Order of the Phoenix. My least favorite probably either the first or second one just because they're so childish as an adult, you know. Probably this. I don't know. I honestly, I like all of them. It's hard to even say. But yeah, if I had to pick my least favorite, probably it's hard to say because the first one sets up so much. And the second one is pretty good, actually. The um, with Tom Riddle's diary and the serpent and Chamber of Secrets. I don't know. I, I don't know. Am I excited about the Harry Potter series coming out on HBO Max? Not really. I'm kind of like the. I'm kind of the mindset of like, if it, you know, I just appreciate what it was. I don't really need them to make 50 spinoffs of the same thing. You know, like it was the same with the Lord. I love Lord of the Rings too, but it was the same with the Lord of the Rings series and all the Hobbits movies. It's kind of like at a certain point it just becomes too much and they don't have the, the same connection as the OGs do, you know? My mom says, I'm competing competing in the International CrossFit Open tomorrow, so I'm signing off. Goodbye. Goodbye, mother. I think Dune P is a masterpiece. Fair. The creator of Harry Potter came out as transphobic, sadly. Okay. Um, Kyle Bourne says, Azkaban and Half-Blood Prince are fire. I, yeah, I agree. I mean, Azkaban, I said, was one of my favorite. Half-Blood Prince is... Look, it's, it's interesting. I was thinking about this the other day. It's like, they're all really... Even standalone, they're all really good movies. How do you recreate the magic? That's what I'm saying. It's like, how do you recreate the magic of the original Harry Potter movies? How do you recreate the magic of the original Lord of the Rings movies? How do you recreate the magic of... You know what I mean? It's like, at a certain point, it gets too strung out. There's too many iterations... It loses its potency. I don't mean technically recreate those theaters. I just want to buy or download the movie in decent quality for home watch. What streaming website can provide an opportunity at the, at the moment? You're not going to find it on a streaming site right now. They are rocking the theater. They're, they're, making, they're, going buku, they're making buku bucks at the theater. They're not, they're not putting it online anytime soon, unfortunately. Once it comes online, I think the quickest place to get it is Amazon Prime. They usually have, once they hit the rental market, you can rent it immediately on Amazon, Google Store, iTunes, but you're not going to find that for a while. Have I ever been to Europe before? Yes. I've been to England, Switzerland, Italy, Germany, and the Czech Republic. Did you watch the offer on the making of The Godfather? Worth watching if you're a fan. Coppola comes off as pretty cool. No, I haven't watched that, but I will. That sounds good. Joshua D says, Order of the Phoenix overall is my least favorite of the eight. But the last 30 minutes of it is awesome. The Voldemort versus Dumbledore scene battle is awesome. Dune 2 will be on Max in a few months, probably. That's true. It is a it is a Warner Brothers film, so it'll be on Max eventually. And I know at the release of this one, Max was pushing the first Dune hard. They're like, watch Dune, watch Dune, watch Dune, watch Dune. They destroy the Star Wars series with too many movies. Yeah, that's that's my point. I mean, I'm not a big fan of Star Wars, even the original three. The first one is, is good. The first one is fun, but I've never been a super big fan of it. Have I heard about The Gods Must Be Crazy? It's really funny. No, I'll check it out. It's on Paramount+. Plus. What is Dune? Dune ain't on Paramount Plus. So it's no other solution except for waiting until theaters to get their profit. Sad. Yeah, I mean, they make them, they make most of their money in theaters. So they're gonna, especially with a successful franchise like this, they're gonna run it in theaters as long as they can. Oh, the offer is on Paramount Plus. I don't have Paramount Plus, sadly. So, oops. Too many streaming services. 
you know, I don't make a, I don't make a ton of money, you know, it's like, how many streaming goddamn services am I supposed to play, pay for, you know? They offer a one week free trial. I think my roommate has it. If I really, if I really wanted to watch it, I could. My thoughts on Joshua Ngannou, man, I really thought Ngannou was going to do better, especially after his fight against Fury. Like he looked pretty good, but he looked God awful against Joshua. So I don't know what that means. And, you know, I would think that Fury would destroy Joshua if they went one on one. So I don't. I, that was confusing. I think maybe Fury just didn't take the fight against Ngannou that seriously, and Joshua did. Maybe that's the difference. I don't know. And I love Ngannou, but I don't know. I want to see him back in MMA because that's what he is. He's an MMA fighter. But Dana White doesn't pay his fighters, so I don't blame him for leaving on the same token, you know. I saw somewhere he made like something like $20 million for the, maybe even more, like, I forgot, maybe it was 200. I remember seeing two zero. Maybe it was like $200 million for this Joshua fight, and he makes like $5 million for a UFC fight. I mean, that's crazy. Fury didn't show up 100%. Yeah. True. 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 Joshua D says, no one would destroy me. Laugh out loud. Okay, buddy. Okay. Are you a boxer, Joshua? Are you an MMA fighter? Do you know jujitsu? That's the question. Joshua says, I mean, maybe. There's no maybe. You either you either know how to box and do MMA and jujitsu or you don't. There's not I maybe know. You either know it or you don't. Now there's different levels to it. You can be a beginner jujitsu fighter, you can be a um beginner boxer or a beginner Muay Thai fighter. But you can't maybe be one. You can be one and be different levels of one, but you can't maybe be one. Kyle Bourne said, I would just run around the ring until the other guy get, got tired. Unfortunately, that ring is smaller than you think. There's nowhere to really run. And they can trap you and you can get cornered. Not a very effective strategy. Is Los Angeles as expensive as everyone says it is? Um... I'd say a, a little bit less expensive than everyone says it is. The thing about Los Angeles to me, it's so big and there's so much land. You can find pockets that are more affordable. Where it's like somewhere in DC or New York, it's so full and such a small area. It feels like no matter where you turn, everything's a trillion dollars. Where in LA, it's like certain places are just out of your mind expensive. But other places aren't, if that makes sense. But yes, it's an expensive city to live in, for sure. Absolutely. All right, we're down to eight viewers here. So I think I'm going to start signing off here. I've been going for two hours. Any final things that anybody want to chat about? I just want to say good night. Have a good night, Jamie. Thanks for the chat, Kyler. I think I was calling you Kyle all night. Your name is Kyler Born, not Kyle Born. I apologize for that. All right, folks. Have a good one. You're the best, Andrew. Thank you.